Hello everyone, good afternoon and welcome. My name is Alejandro Morel, I work in the company Creara in Spain. This webinar is about energy efficiency measures for indoor lighting. After the last one week, this is the second webinar about indoor lighting. Today we're going to talk about saving measures. In the third and last webinar, we'll study the energy saving calculations. Today, after a brief introduction, we'll see how to reduce the lighting energy consumption. And as we did in the first lighting webinar, we are studying specifically LED lighting. We are going to analyze with further detail this technology, especially from an efficiency perspective. In lighting, this is important, there are no better lamps or worse lamps. What we have, finally, is more suitable lamps for my needs. We have some requirements. We require to fulfill some quantity and quality needs. We also have some requirements in efficiency, in cost, in life, in protection, in photometry. So what we need is the optimum technology for my requirements. And we have to uh, choose a, a perfect luminaire, a perfect lamp, a perfect control system for my requirements. This table shows a comparison of different lighting technologies. As I just said, there is no a better lamp, but, a, but a, an optimal lamp for any application. If I need a perfect color reproduction, I'll probably choose an incandescent lamp or an halogen lamp. But if my system is going to work many hours a year, like a parking slot, LED is more interesting because of the eff efficiency and lifetime of the lamps. The energy consumption of a luminar is equal to the system power times the time of use. The system power is the power of the lamps plus the power of the auxiliary equipment. And this power, this system power, times the time of use is the energy consumption of my lighting system. Based on this formula, there are only two ways we can reduce the energy consumption. We reduce the power or we reduce the time of use. For decreasing the power, the first option is analyze the lighting level, the illuminance. If the illuminance is too high, an energy saving measure would be to reduce it. We will come back to this. If the illuminance is correct or even it, sometimes it's low, there is no saving here, but we can always improve the system efficiency. We can improve the luminar, the lamp, or even the auxiliary equipment. Right now, with the lighting revolution produced by LEDs, almost every luminar can be substituted with a more efficient system. We just have to analyze if this change is interesting from an energy point of view, an economics point of view, and even an environmental point of view. The other possibility is to decrease the lighting time of use. We can get this with intelligent control system, such occupancy detectors or sunlight detectors. And of course, we can, get, we can also reduce the time of use with good and efficient habits, like turning off the lights when we leave a room. But today, we're not going to focus in this option, but in the technology retrofit. Following this introduction, we're going to study the first option, the power reduction. We get this replacing the lighting system, the whole system, or just an element. First, we're going to analyze the illuminance reduction. Lighting requirements are different depending on the room, depending on the task we are doing. As we can see in this table, the recommended illuminance in working spaces is around 500 luxes, while in hallways, for example, is only 100. This also happens with CRI. Remember, CRI, or Color Rendering Index, is the quality of the lamps, our capacity to see different colors. And we don't need the same quality, just as we don't need the same quantity in every room, in every application. There is another indicator, uh, you can see in the table, there is a column headed with the letters UGR. This is the Unified Glare Rating. We'll see this uh, in the next slide. 
There is an European standard, the EN124641, with the illuminance, illuminance depending of the task, depending of the, on the room. And the illuminance should not be higher than the allowed illuminance in this standard. Just as we said, the unified glare rating is the indicator to quantify the glare directly caused by the light sources. The values of this indicator are between 10 and 30. The higher the value, the higher the glare of the luminar. This, the UGR of a luminar is always provided by the manufacturer, but it can change depending on, depending on the installation also. The lighting level in a surface, or as we call it, the illuminance, can be measured or set with a simulation. We usually measure it with a, the equipment we use is a luxometer. The luxometer is a simple equipment and a cheap equipment, and we use it, uh, we have to measure in several points so we can establish the average illuminance in the room. But measuring is not always an option. Sometimes we have to simulate the room. For example, in new buildings, or in an existing building, if we want to try a new lighting system, we have to simulate the lighting system. In this slide, we can see two simulations. When we draw the lamps, we draw the room, and we get the illuminance in the working surface, in the table. Overlighting can be reduced by replacing lamps for lower power lamps or cutting the number of lamps per room. The first option, reducing the power of the lamps, is preferable since it serves better for the purpose of light distribution and the performance of the luminar. But of course, the most common is the second option, cutting the numbers of lamps per room. This is not ideal. This is not ideal. We can see a picture here in this slide or a luminar prepared for two lamps but there is only one lamp. This is very common because with this option you don't need an investment and instantly you reduce the consumption in 50%. Moving forward, we're going to talk now about LED systems. LED technology will represent 60% of lighting system, of all lighting system in 2020. Here I have selected some news about LEDs in indoor lighting. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to read some of these news. Uh, Cree, lead luminaire breaks 100 lumens per watt, barrier for indoor lighting. LED lighting market growing at 17.3%, while traditional lighting shrinks at 7.6%. LSI illuminates indoor tennis facility with indirect LED lighting. The main advantages of LED lighting are high efficiency and high lifespan, high lifetime. But there are no the, these are not the only benefits. There are other benefits such control possibilities, adjustment possibilities, because LEDs can be adjusted up to 10%. And also, there is another benefit, the direct light, the directionality. But this, we talked about, uh, about this last week, can also be an inconvenient, because we can have the problem of glare. First of all, efficiency. LED LED efficiency is high, higher than other indoor lighting technologies. This graph shows the efficiency range of different technologies. We have uh, LEDs, we have high pressure, we have uh, compact fluorescent lamps, linear fluorescent lamps, and incandescent lamps. The main benefit of LEDs is not only the current efficiency, but the potential efficiency. Fluorescence and incandescence efficiency is set. It's, there, there are no much room for improvement. While uh, LEDs can improve the performance significantly in the coming years. It's important also to acknowledge that the instantaneous efficiency, the one we can get in a laboratory, is not is different, it's not the same than the real efficiency. The real efficiency will depend on the light color, the temperature, and the uh, intensity, the electrical intensity.
We have just seen that light color is one of the factors to consider in efficiency. Warm light is less efficient than cool light in LEDs, as shown in this graph. This is a limitation, especially in residential, when it's preferable to have warm light. Uh, another applications, another facilities when it's interesting to have warm light uh, would be restaurants, would be hotels, but for example in a hospital, in public lighting, it's preferable to have cool light. The temperature is also an important factor in LED efficiency, maybe the most important factor. The, uh, remember, the light produced by an LED does not emit in the UV or the higher range. So the heat should be dissipated by other transfer mechanisms, conduction or convention. The graph uh, at the right shows how efficiency decreases with the system temperature. You can see how, as the temperature increases, LED performance and LED efficiency are lower. Uh, so, we need a dissipator. One of the most important parts of LED luminaires are the heat dissipator. The dissipator helps the heat transfer, so temperature won't become so high. There is another important factor, apart from the temperature, is the electric current, the electric intensity that goes through the diode. Uh, LED efficiency depends on its working intensity. This intensity can move from 350 milliamps to 1.5 amps. And we get, as we can see in the graph, higher efficiency at lower intensities. The consequences is if we want to maximize the efficiency, we require more lighting points per room, or maybe the same lighting points, but we need more diodes per lamp. When I talk about uh, diodes per lamp, the, the diodes are visible. The diodes are the, the point, the dots we see in the lamp. Those are the LED diodes, OK? And if we want to maximize the efficiency, we, we need a lamp with more diodes, but less current per diode. As a matter of fact, uh, there are some providers who offer cheaper lamps with less diodes running at high intensities. There, uh, as a result, uh, these LEDs are not efficient at all. This table shows the differences between laboratory conditions and real applications. Efficiency is always lower in the real world. This is in LEDs and also in conventional lighting. We can, for example, see that fluorescence, the data sheet efficiency is 60 to 90 lumens per watt, but the usable efficiency is 39 to 60 lumens per watt. In LEDs, the data sheet efficiency, the laboratory efficiency is from 90 to 120 lumens per watt, and the usable, the real efficiency is from 70 to 90. We said the, the LED advantages were high efficiency and high lifetime. Efficiency is the most important benefit, especially when we are talking about saving, ac saving actions, but it's not the only. A high lifespan or lifetime is also an important LED quality, especially in applications where luminaires are not very accessible. A LED luminaire can work up to 60,000 hours. That's almost seven years with no interruption. This life is significantly higher than any other indoor lamp. You can see this in this table. Lifespan is determined by the probability of a catastrophic failure and the luminous flux maintenance. Because after these 60,000 hours, the lamp doesn't stop working, but the flux weakens. Lifetime depends on different factors. The most influent factor is the temperature. This is the most influent factor in efficiency and also in lifetime. An increase of 30 degrees in temperature can cause a 75% lifetime reduction. 
it's not the only factor, also the output stability of the driver, that uh, this is also important, the stable, uh, we need a stable voltage and a stable intensity. There are another factors like radiation and light over the luminar, the humidity, the mechanical influence, the chemicals. Another advantage are, uh, of LEDs are the control possibilities. In control possibilities, the great advantage of LEDs is that they don't suffer when adjusted, contrary to other lamps like fluorescents, whose lifetime is reduced when frequently turned on and off. LED power, and of course the luminous flux, can be reduced up to 10% of the nominal power. So it's really important to choose a driver that's compatible with regulation. Otherwise, otherwise, we're not gaining one of the most important benefits of LED lighting. And finally, uh, directionality, direct light. Directionality makes LEDs even more efficient. This and the, the directionality and also the absence of reflectors increases the luminar efficiency. The light output ratio, the luminar efficiency, is much higher in LED, in LEDs, than in conventional system. This table compares a fluorescent lamp and a LED. The fluorescent is more powerful, is 36, 36 watts against 14.5 watts, and its flux is higher. We have 3,250 lumens versus uh, 1,600 lumens. But the directionality makes that the illuminance is the same in both systems. This is really interesting, but uh, we can't forget the glare problem. The directionality can get uh, some glare problems. There are some barriers to LED technology. The first and the most important one is the superior initial investment to conventional systems. LED lighting, LED luminaires are more expensive than other technologies. There are another barriers. Like this is a, this technology is kind of recent, so we lack of standards, of, of specifications, even with laboratories for LEDs. There is a limited experience in its use. We need to develop uh, adaptive control systems, and finally, LED. Uh, there is a competition with other new technologies like induction. But going back to saving possibilities, we talked about illuminance reduction, and now we're going to analyze the power reduction by efficiency increase. If the energy efficiency of the system is increased by replacing the luminaire, replacing the lamp, or even the auxiliary equipment, the power is reduced and also the energy consumption. Replacing the luminaire is more expensive, as we can see in this slide, but the energy savings are also bigger. If we substitute the lamp but not the luminaire, we keep the same luminaire, we can have some problems with light distribution and heat dissipation. We have to consider that if a luminaire is designed to work with a fluorescent lamp and we change the lamp to a LED, the luminaire performance is worse. Depending on the current technology and the desired one, there are many replacement possibilities. For example, if we have an incandescent lamp, we can replace it with a LED, with a compact fluorescent, or even with an halogen. In the following slides, we're going to see the recommended lamps depending on the original technology. The table shows the power of the current lamp, in this case the incandescent lamp, and also the power of the new lamp. So we can set the energy savings of this replacement. This slide shows the replacement from an incandescent lamp to a LED. We can get, with this replacement, 80% uh, savings. Uh, 
here from an incandescent lamp to a compact fluorescent. The savings are also huge. We can achieve also 80% uh, of savings. These are not so common from an incandescent lamp to an halogen bulb. The savings are, are also significant, are 50%, and we maintain the quality because halogen is also an incandescent technology, so we can maintain the quality, the quality light. These lamps, halogen lamps, can also be replaced by LEDs, saving 80% of the energy consumption. If we look at the table, we have uh, 50 watts against 6.5 6 watts, or 75 watts against 9.5 uh, watts. It's 80% uh, of savings. Allogens can also be replaced with compact fluorescents. The savings are also uh, high, 80%. Another possibility is keeping the allogen technology with its benefits, but, but replace common allogens with high efficiency allogens. In the table we can see, we can, we can compare a 60 watt uh, lamp with a 35 watt lamp. This is, means 30 pence of savings. And we can keep the color light, the quality of the light. As we have seen previously, fluorescence, although being an efficient technology, can also be replaced with a more efficient system. Here we are comparing fluorescence with LED. Okay, uh, we can get 40-45% in savings. But fluorescence can be changed with more efficient fluorescence too the eco technology, the eco fluorescent technology. This is interesting because we can maintain the luminar and this luminar uh, would work with its original design. That's an advantage. We commented that in order to reduce the lighting energy consumption, we can reduce the system power or the time the lamps are turned on. We can reduce the time of use with, with good habits, for example, turning off the lights when we leave a room, or with control systems. So we don't have to worry with these tasks. This is especially interesting in public use buildings. We can regulate and adjust the, li the light depending on different inputs. The two factors we usually control are occupancy, the presence, and the sunlight. The systems, the control system, uh, system has to measure this, the presence and the sunlight, then evaluate them and adjust the lamps in response. So a control system, uh, to, we need to control the luminaires first, detectors, to measure the inputs. Seconds, second, uh, dimmers to control the lamp output. And finally, a control system, a brain, this control system sends orders to the dimmers based on the input values received and the reference value set. Usually the control system is integrated in the detector. Occupancy. The occupancy can be controlled with an, uh, with an occupancy or presence sensor. This sensor provides adjustment or automatic on-off switching of lighting loads of lamps in response to the presence or absence, of course, of people in a defined area. The savings are variable. They depend on how the system, how the lamps used to work before, meaning how much time the lights were on before the control system installation. This time can be measured or estimated. LED are more suitable for adjustment because their lifetime is not reduced. Finally, the occupancy sensor, they can detect presence by movement. This is the most common. 
but also they can detect presence uh, with temperature. There is another possibility, possibility of occupancy sensors are the timer suites. Uh, these timer suites uh, offer time on and off control of lighting loads. This keep the lamps on only for a set time after they are turned on. This time can be 30 seconds, 2 minutes, depending on the facility, and the savings would be the same than with the occupancy sensor. But occupancy is not the only factor in light adjustment. It's maybe the most common, but it's not the only factor. Another possibility is to control the artificial lighting depending on the sunlight, on the natural light. Therefore, the lights are, uh, are on only if the sunlight is not enough. Even more, we can adjust the lamps depending on the sunlight quantity. So the lamps consumption depends on the time of the day, the weather, the distance to the window, and the lamp's power varies instantly adjusting to the momentary needs. Often, detectors combine occupancy and sunlight sensors. This way, we maximize the lighting control. We can uh, adjust the light manually. There's another possibility. With a, with a dimmer switch. The principle is the same, but in this case, it's the user who decides if the sunlight is enough to adjust the lamp's flux. These, cost, these control systems read the variables and act in response. The detectors, the occupancy detector or the sunlight detector, read the inputs and send a signal, but the lamp's power needs to be adjusted. So we require, we require apart from the detectors, a special auxiliary equipment that has to be compatible with the reduction, with the adjustment. For fluorescent lamps, we have the dimming ballast. And for LEDs, we have the driver. The driver must be compatible with lamp adjustment. To sum up, we come back to the, one of the first slides. All energy saving actions in lighting are divided into two groups. Power reduction, as we said, and time of use reduction. The next session will be about this measures calculation. We will see how to calculate energy savings, economic savings, environmental savings, and profitability of these actions. Well, this is all. I hope you found this webinar interesting, and thank you all for your attention.